Hey everybody, it's Christopher K. Smith. This is my FibLines quarterly update for July 5th of 2020. So just real quick, this fast video will last less than 10 minutes. We'll try to give you an intro of what the FibLines is. We'll look at the stock market through the lens of the FibLines indicator and give you some insights and whatnot going forward. So quickly, what is FibLines? FibLines is a study that you can apply to a chart uh, that will calculate potential errors or support resistance in the future. So the way it works, essentially you grab this Fibonacci retracements tool you pick two lines, two points on the chart, and you draw a line like this between the top and the bottom of what you think is essentially a kind of the initial leg of a move here. And you'll see that's the 0 to 100%. And the, the uh, fib lines or fib, fib retracements tool will draw these red lines at 161 and then 261 and 423. And if you pick your lines, interesting, you'll notice something very interesting here is that once you do that, the stocks tend to deflect at first the 161 of the initial move the 261, and then again the 423 before they kind of repeat themselves and go through this uh, cycle, kind of a rinse and, and wash kind of cycle. So basically it's based on this uh, uh, work of a 13th century Italian mathematician named Fibonacci who, uh, well, I'm not going to get into the details here. If you want to uh, get get the background, you can go on YouTube and search for Intro to Fib Lines where you can get my indicator. I'll talk, get my video where I'll give you kind of a more detailed look as to what the what the thinking is behind it. But suffice it to say, if you pick your highs and lows in the charts, you'll notice some amazing things. And, and it's been a pretty extraordinary, per, extraordinary period of the stock market we just went through. And, um, and what's even more interesting is if you look at this sequence that sort of washed out back here at the 423 line, well, the same, we went through the entire 423 down to bottom of the 100% channel with this recent sell-off. So you notice we got up here around the 423. Again, this is the IWM, the Russell's, uh, Russell 2000 ETF. Market sold all the way down in a period of almost no time at all, all the way down to the bottom of the 100% line, and has since been recovered all the way back. So it's been a huge shock that the economy has been through with the coronavirus, and so many things have changed. And uh, it's just very inter inter interesting to see the way um, something as an ETF as big as the I IWN did this complete uh, washout um, uh, cycle at the bottom here, where it's just totally flushed and. Uh, shook out all the weak holders and it basically essentially is coming back. So it's very much a wash and rinse kind of scenario you see in future sometimes, the way prices move up and down uh, so quickly. So we saw that in IWM. We also saw it in uh, Home Depot where, uh, uh, well, the other interesting thing I should say is once you add the uh, FibLines indicator, all those lines are drawn for you automatically. So the indicator contains both the math to do the um, calculation as well as the levels for about 220 uh, stock symbols. So Home Depot, another interesting thing, came up to the uh, 261 line, came all the way down. This recent sell-off um, came all the way from the 423% four, line all the way down to the bottom of the channel and all the way back. Not only that, it made a new all-time high. So uh, you notice the IWM didn't, but Home Depot did. So um, that's one of the themes I find pretty interesting here is the way um, the economy has taken a huge shock. Uh, most of the market in terms of the broad indexes have not come all the way back, but a couple select symbols have. So, um, so yeah, just, just here's what the FIB sequence numbers look like. Um, 100, 161, 261, 428. And I actually added uh, the 685 and the 1108 levels uh, two or three years back. I've been doing this about four years now. So take a look at the markets uh, year to date. Um, we had a pretty good 2019 across the board. Uh, but even given the complete shellacking that the markets took, that huge swoon down in March, uh, they've come pretty much all the way back. Um, SPY is 3% short of uh, even for the year. Dow still down 10%. IWM down to bruising 14% as we saw. But the, look at this. The QQQ is up 18% of the year. And this kind of repeats the theme that we saw in the, my last quarterly update where the QQQ recently in the last few years not only has less drawdown, it has higher returns on the upside than versus the other indexes. And you can see... 2019, they, they, uh, QQQ totally crushed the other indexes here, and it's crushing them in 2020 uh, as well, year to date. And you know, some of that comes from just a few big stocks that made new all-time highs, as we'll see in a second. Uh, but even if you take the QQQE and you evenly weight all of them, it's still up 4.39% 4, 4 for the year. So it's more than just a couple of big stocks uh, pushing the NASDAQ uh, higher. You can see long-term, though, um, uh, the return... But all three of the indexes kind of in the same ballpark in the 300% range. Um, but QQQ has definitely been an outperformer since 2010 and clearly in the last uh, last two or three years as well. Uh, so that's the easy thing. Just buy the, buy the ETF. They manage it for you. They kick out the losers and they uh, add the winners, as you'll see in a second. 
Okay, new, new all-time highs. The Qs, of course, made a new all-time high after uh, selling all the way down, coming all the way back. Um, and none of the other indexes did that. That's mostly just on the strength of the, again, most of the a few strong names. Um, but uh, among the stocks in there that made the new highs, Apple, Akamai, Amazon, Adobe, pretty much all technology names, and uh, definitely names that, as we talked about, and uh, should have left a, should put Facebook in here as well, that are benefiting from the COVID economy. And uh, technology has been a theme for many years now, but uh, more than ever, the companies that are going to do well are the ones that are thriving. It's the work-at-home economy, and uh, all these certainly fall into that category. Amazon, um, you know, Facebook, Microsoft, and, and Amazon have been a huge performers in the cloud space. And uh, PayPal also on the financial side. I've been in that one in the past, and uh, as well as some participation from medical technologies. Okay, um, so that's very interesting. So the economy's taken a huge hit. The broader market hasn't come all the way back, but at the same time, the queue led the queues led by these names comes in and makes an all-time high. PayPal's been a complete beast, actually. Now, this is the only one of those that's really in the financial space, and uh, I thought I was a genius for catching this down here in the 60s and riding it up to the early you know, uh, 100s or something like that. Got washed out of it essentially, eventually, and just in the last since the sell-off, you know, went from the 119 area all the way up to the 170 area. So. PayPal has been a huge winner, and according to the FibLines indicator, the next point of resistance is going to be up here in the 210 area. Now, given the, the velocity, the angle sent here, I, you know, I'd be a little reluctant to jump in right here, but this earnings could be a nice tell here coming up on 729. So if we see a, uh, some kind of a sharp sell-off, because obviously a lot of uh, expectations built into this earnings report, if we see a sharp sell-off down here at the 140 area, it might be a good time to add. So be aware of those earnings dates. Um, next up, we have, uh, yeah, so we updated the NASDAQ, and, you know, stocks are always coming and going, and one of the things I do in my quarterly update is I, uh, I, I resync the NASDAQ 100 to make sure I cover all those symbols. And uh, interesting one added here, Computer Discount Warehouse, company's been out for a long time. ANSYS, similar to the uh, AutoCAD business. Uh, auto parts, uh, real estate management, uh, Dexcom, the diabetes uh, space, I know a little bit about that, having a family with diabetes. DocuSign, Seattle Genetics removed are the companies that uh, have done terrible in this economy. American Airlines, uh, United Airlines, and Norwegian Cruise Lines. I have a position in that. It's a whole other story I don't want to get into. But uh, yeah, so the, this is the great thing about the NASDAQ 100 and ETFs in general is uh, the NASDAQ 100 is much more actively managed than most than the other indexes. So I think once a year, they uh, I think it's in the April time frame since the last quarterly update, they they come up, they kick a bunch of symbols out, put a bunch of symbols in, and that algorithm is very much based, based on uh, chasing performance. So that's why I think the NASDAQ does so well, is because they manage it aggressively, and there's so many high growth companies in the NASDAQ versus some of the more uh, conventional indexes. And of course, they share a lot of the same symbols, so the SPY and NASDAQ are not going to go different directions for too much, too long a period of time, but you'll notice the uh, recent performance of the NASDAQ has, has been uh, pretty no notable. And uh, that's why it's such a great investment strategy. You just buy the QQQ, they manage it for you, and they'll they'll dump the losers and they'll add to the winners. It's a no-brain uh, uh, trading strategy. Plus, it's tax advantage. When they sell those winners and losers, you don't have to pay taxes on it until you uh, sell the ETF. So it's just a great invention. It's probably one of the greatest things ever for, for investors, ETFs. So that's, uh, in terms of my favorites uh, going forward, like I said, I like PayPal, but a little, a little too hot at this point. One I really do like is uh, ServiceNow. Uh, this is one of Kramer's uh, cloud kings that have come up. This has had a really nice rally off the bottom here, uh, but uh, you know it's not up as as uh, as steeply as PayPal is. But uh, you see, it had very much has the move of a winter stock. And you think four hundred dollars stock? I'm going to go out and buy a four hundred dollars stock, Chris. Yes, just buy a couple of shares. You don't have to buy a hundred. Just tuck it away. This very much has the look of an Amazon here. Uh, give it time. It's going to be a beast. And, uh, you know, $400 stock could easily be a $500 or $1,000 stock. So, um, you know, your, your 623 line is up here at almost $500 a share. I like that one. Um, CMG has had a nice uh, move as well. Hard to believe with a restaurant stock actually doing well in this, uh, in this economy with the complete uh, bloodbath that the restaurant and entertainment business has taken. But another look here flushed all the way down to the 161 line in this case. 
came all the way back in a new all-time high. That's certainly a winner. Uh, Facebook, you know, I I was with this one for a long time. I did well. Um, that's like a buy on pullbacks, I would say. And really, overall, just the Nasdaq, the QQQ has been uh, been great. Well, one of the things I wanted to say um, that I thought was interesting was uh, um, last year at this time I had some extra cash. I needed to just put away thirty uh, thirty thousand bucks. Uh, there was a money market yield at that point that would yield two point three percent. Would pay me fifty-three dollars a month on that thirty uh, k, and it's basically in a bank account, hundred percent guaranteed. Well, over time, look how much the return has gone down. So one year ago, less than one year ago, a, a money insured bank market was making a, a bank FDIC insured bank account was paying me over two percent. Now it's paying a zero point zero five percent or a paltry dollar twenty-five a month. So that's just going to drive money into risk assets. The Fed to cut, cut rates essentially to zero here, and they've done unlimited QE to get out of this virus mess. So that's going to force you into high-risk assets. So if you have cash sitting on the side, it's probably going to underperform versus uh, almost any asset. So I'm going to scale into the QQQ, um, either buy some shares and sell calls or just sell some puts there, and maybe if it goes down, it'll, it'll, get, it'll, it'll get put. But cash is the, pretty much dead at this point. Um, that's it. So... Yeah, the Fib lines indicator. You can go get up here in the Fib tools uh, cells, fibtools.cells.com. I sell this indicator for Thinkorswim for $99 for one year. With that, you get the full indicator and four quarterly updates, and this is one of them. And the indicator, as I mentioned, includes both the math to do the calculations and the uh, the implied values for all your big favorite stocks: your Amazon, your Netflix, your Googles. It's all in there, along with um, ETFs. Also works on uh, select spec select sector spiders. Here's the XLK uh, select spider technology uh, stock. Dollar index, gold, uh, all your big symbols are all in there. So that's it. You can get it up in the Fib Tool Sell Store for $99 or one year subscription. And that's it. Thanks very much for watching. Good trading. Stay healthy. Stay safe. And have a great rest of 2020.